Well, hello there. I'm Borna, your organic chemistry tutor, and um, I've been uploading a lot of solid mechanism problems recently, and I was like, why not just upload a video in which I teach you guys how to come up with a mechanism um, for a reaction you've never seen before, how to approach that kind of a problem, and I decided to demonstrate that using an example. This is what we're gonna do today. Let's get started. All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna show how you can come up with a reasonable mechanism um, for a reaction you're given. I'm gonna be pursuing two strategies, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna have two strategies. Strategy number one is going to be thinking about what makes sense to happen. What is reasonable under these conditions? So what makes sense? Strategy number two is going to be keeping track of carbons through numbering. Keeping track of carbons or atoms in general, but mostly carbons using numbering. And I'm going to use an example um, to demonstrate how I use those two strategies in tandem to come up with a mechanism for a uh, reaction. The thing is, sometimes one might work better than the other. Sometimes you might rely um, entirely on one and not use the other. But it's important to have both of these at the same time in the back of our mind as to what makes sense to happen under these conditions and um, what bonds are being connected and what bonds are being disconnected. Now, looking at the, stru at the structure of the molecule, I have an alcohol and I have acid. So protonation of this acid, actually let me copy this and take it down. All right, so let's, let's talk about it right now. So I have an alcohol and I have an acid and it makes a whole lot of sense for the alcohol to be protonated and for a protonated alcohol to basically want to leave as water to form a carbocation, and the carbocation would be tertiary. So this makes a whole lot of sense to happen. And given what is going on in the product, I know that some sort of rearrangement has taken place. Um, so the formation of the carbocation actually does make a whole lot of sense. So that is that. I'm gonna think the first couple of steps are gonna look something like this. So I form an OH2 right here. I'm going to have that water leave and that is going to lead to the formation of a carbic ion. Now, as for how that carbic ion is going to rearrange, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to number the carbons of the starting material. I'm going to use a different color such as red. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, notice that I'm not numbering the two methyl groups and I'm not doing that on purpose. The reason is because um, it's very likely that, or I mean, this is not necessarily guaranteed, but I'm banking on the fact that those two methyl groups are not gonna change position throughout the course of the reaction. I'm gonna use those as anchor points to basically translate the numbering to the product if it starts not making sense, I can always go back and change my numbering. I can like revisit the strategy. But for right now, I'm gonna assume that the two methyls are gonna stay put. So I'm gonna say, uh, perhaps say this is carbon one, this is carbon five, the two carbons that have a methyl. And since that molecule is symmetrical anyway, doesn't really matter which one is gonna be one, which one is gonna be five, but I just numbered it that way. So it looks pretty much like the starting material. And one and five are connected by three sp2, um, sp3 carbons, three CH2s. Two, three, and four. All right, that seems to be making sense. And then next to five, I have six and seven. Now, that is when things are starting to look a little weird. Now, seven in the starting material was not connected to one, now it is. Maybe that is something we need to worry about. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to think about the bonds that are being made and the bonds that are being broken in a little bit. Um, the only carbon that remains is eight. I'm going to number this eight. And with that, I'm going to think about the bonds that are being made and the bonds that are being broken. So the bonds that are being made, I'm going to actually the bonds that are being broken. I'm going to mark with red the bonds that are being made. 
I'm going to mark with green. So as I said, the bond between 1 and 7 didn't seem to be present in the starting material. So that is one of the bonds that are being that is being made. So I'm going to mark that. Um, 8 was not connected to an OH. It is in the product. So that is a bond that is being made. All right. So that seems to take care of the bonds that are being made. The bonds that are being broken are this OH is leaving. So that carbon 1 oxygen is being broken. And 7, 8 is also being broken. In other words, 7 got disconnected from carbon 1, uh, uh, 7 got disconnected from carbon 8 and got connected to carbon 1. And now think about it, since, and if I translate the numbering at the like key positions, I have 8 right here, I have 1 right here, and I have 7 right here. And think about it, now carbon 1 is a carbon cation. How about I have the bond between 7 and 8 break? move over to expand the four member drink and essentially i have a carbon cation rearrangement and that places the positive charge on carbon eight now if i have the positive charge on carbon eight that basically paves the way for placing an oh on it so that seems to make a whole lot of sense so let's move on with that strategy and uh, and see what that gives us all right so i'm gonna try to draw um that intermediate first the way that I have it right here, and then translate that into something that looks a little uh, closer to the structure that I have in the product. Now, in order to demonstrate that rearrangement, I'm going to draw the starting carbon cation. Now, what is going to happen is that this one is going to be broken, and it's going to move over here. And the positive charge is going to end up being here. Let me move through that one more time. I'm starting with this. Now, this bond becomes broken, moves over here, and the positive charge ends up here. I hope you got that. So this is the carbon cation that I have. Now, if I try to draw that in a way that is more similar to that of the product, I'm gonna... Um, all right so i have this and then i have the two methyls and carbon eight with a positive charge which can be uh, be uh, intercepted by a water molecule to basically give me something very close to the product all that needs to happen from this point is basically deprotonation of what I get at this step. I have a positive charge on oxygen. Another water molecule comes in, abstracts a positive charge, abstracts a proton to basically alleviate the positive charge, and that gives me the product. All right, now this is how I get to the product. Let me just um, basically briefly recap what I did. So first of all, I am given <clears throat> this reaction and I have two strategies for um, coming up with a mechanism for this reaction and I use these two strategies both at the same time all right I want to think about what makes sense to happen under these given conditions and I want to keep track of my carbons and try to figure out which bonds are being br broken and which ones are being which bonds are being made now sometimes one strategy works better than the other but the key is using both of them at the same time um, gives us the maximum amount of power we can have to tackle this problem. Now, as for what makes sense to happen, I have an alcohol. That alcohol can get protonated and leave as a carbon cation. So I'm thinking that is probably the first few steps of the reaction. So that's how I got to this intermediate right here. And then at the same time, I number the carbons and try to figure out which bonds are being broken and which bonds are being made now here. I marked the bonds that are being made and the bonds that are being broken and basically figured out what needs to happen to my carbon cation for the like bond break breaking and bond making pattern to be observed. Once I figure that out, I execute that and I'm delighted to see that that basically brings me very close to the product and now all that happens <clears throat> when the carbon cation rearranges is that water needs to intercept the carbon cation and that basically gives me the alcohol product. 
I hope you can use this strategy or these two strategies in tandem to tackle your mechanism problems better. Um, on my channel, I have a lot of um, solved mechanism problems. You can go through them and try them on your own and then see the solution and basically practice drawing mechanisms. Alright guys, um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button, also share and subscribe to see more um, uh, solved problems, uh, tips and tricks and tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.